Thanks, everybody. Morning to good morning to Monday Mastermind. And today, what I wanted to do was change it up a little bit. What we decided to do was why not go ahead and actually come out to a coaching session and kind of show you the wrap up of a scoring method coaching session. So today, we've already gone through and done the one putt circle, we've done the two putt circle, we've gone ahead and done the three putt circle, and I've got uh, Brad uh, and I've got Maurice out here. And so what I want to do is just go through and kind of show you with Brad what we're going to work on. I haven't done anything on the range with him, uh, and he's got a ton of power, but his biggest thing is keeping the ball in control. He was shooting you know, mid to low 90s, losing a lot of golf balls with his driver, uh, struggling to keep the ball in play. Now he's hitting his two iron and five iron off the tee box. And so what I wanted to do here is um, wrap up the session with them, but I also want to show you the last part of the session. So we sort of held on to it a little bit here. I see Steve Miller. Good to see you, sir. John, Derek, Ross. So yeah, ask questions as we go. And uh, I'll do my best as I try and figure out how to use my iPad with the back camera. So let's see. There's the camera right there. So if I do that. Okay. So with that said, right. Nice shot, Brad. That was really good. That low one for the under the wind in Scotland is fantastic. All right, Brad, say hi to everybody. Hello. You can't you see doing? him. I'll, I'll introduce Lippy that we're going to flip it around this way. So this, these are all the guys, a bunch of the guys who've got 12 guys on so far right now. Okay. So what we're going to do, Brad, is I want you to go ahead and get your five iron and then get out your, um, get out. I will actually just use your scorecard. Okay. So let's see the scorecard from today. Let's turn it over. And let's talk about what we're going to go on to today. So we are going to go ahead and sit up here and we're going to start working at long last. I told you I would on your off your tee shots, right? So we're going to go into this section here. We're going to go 20 yard wide fairway has to go 175 yards. So I know you can hit your five iron plenty distance. So put 25 in 20 yards in there, 175 in there, grab out the five iron, have a couple swings to warm up. And then we're going to go through it as I talk to the team right here. So guys, if you've got any questions, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask. But the, so the big thing for Brad, and he can hear me saying this, is uh, the last three rounds, Brad, 84, 82, 83, is that right? 83, 83, 84. 83, 83, 84. So we've already got, you know, seven or eight shots off of this game, but he's very capable of breaking 80. And so what I wanted to do was leave out getting on doing a coaching session with him. I, we've done three playing assessments. So one playing assessment, two coaching sessions on the course, so three times we've played, just teaching him basically how to overcome the mental side of things. His tendency is to swing pretty hard, pretty fast, but he hits it a long way. So we're going to go ahead and set this up. So, uh, Brad, our target, we're going to go, you see, the, um, you see the orange fence in the distance, right? Okay, so if you miss it on the 100-yard pole here, you see the net hanging down uh -huh. and then the right side. So that's how tight the fairway is. That's 20 yards in the distance. So from the bottom of the, of the, of the net to the right side over there. Okay. Yes. So go ahead and set up. This is our first one right here. Okay. So go ahead, grab, grab out your scorecard, put down an R for right on that. As I tell these boys, I always love adding pressure with them, so they've uh, got a little pressure on them. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Next one set up. Do you want to put it on? Do you want to go up on the grass there and put it on a tee? Because you'd be doing that on the golf course. Let's just move up a little bit and put it on a tee. Nice, Maurice. We've got Maurice over here just working on contact right now i've been playing golf five months so he's absolutely killing it right now with his uh with his short game and his scoring okay let's see it very nice okay so what level of tension are you feeling right now a lot a lot why give me give me the feedback why are you feeling tension what's the what's the yeah everyone's watching you don't worry we've got people in canada we've got people all over america florida yeah, so if you're hitting it badly, you're actually just ruining their morning. Do you know that? So, <laughs> so what are we going to do on this shot? Come on, get the focus. What's our target here? Come on, what's the, what the, the target is where? The white pole, right? Yeah. Okay, so I want you fully focused on that. Get back, go through your routine. This is exactly what we're experiencing, right, with the boys on a Saturday. Go through the routine, <clears throat> put the five iron in play. 
So you, as you guys hear, like I'm always just trying to have a good time with these guys and, and, and highlight the pressure that I know that they're under pressure for getting them to start to slow it down, get comfortable, start to go through the routine. Okay, so what would you do differently, Brad? Pressure and me don't get along with Well, that's why we're here though, isn't it, right? So what are you going to do? Breathe? Okay, take some breaths. See your target out there. <clears throat> Oh, actually, come back and do your scorecard. You didn't do your scorecard. You need to go one to the right. Right, come back here and do the scorecard real quick. <clears throat> so put it to the right. And then Maurice, come on over and have a quick chat with us. Uh, we're going to have Brad do that. So <clears throat> Maurice, give us some thoughts and feedback on the workbook. Uh, let's grab the workbook and just kind of go what we went through. So this is Maurice's second session using the scoring method. And Maurice, what did you take from today so far with what we've been practicing on? We are watching you, Brad. Don't worry, the video's right behind you. <laughs> so, uh, I'd say for me, we started off with putting, you know, getting down two putting. Yep. Feeling comfortable to be able to get a nice two putt in. Uh, showing me how to work better, because I mean, in all honesty, I showed up 30 minutes early in practice putting, but it wasn't as effective until learning how to practice the right way yeah let's do this we'll turn the camera this way so we can both talk so and what what's effective practice what what were the things that we changed in your practice today what was uh, different than what you normally did i know for myself i get into a habit of you know i dang that was a bad shot let me drop another ball let me redo yeah. that shot whereas the coach here sat there and taught me no let that be your realistic goal don't try and think no i can do better than that let me drop another ball Put what you did as your first, you know, yep. goal as your track. No. Yeah, training. Yeah, 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 yeah your exactly. track shot. That yep. way, you know, next time or when I go through this again, I know that this is the goal that I need to beat. You know, proving to yourself that num numbers don't lie. Yeah. You know, that's that's how Coach teaches. And num numbers don't lie. Well, yeah, and go over today. Open up your scorebook right here and let's see. Because you were upset that you only got two out of ten, right? And what was my response to you that we got two out of ten? But it shows us where our game actually is, right? So, yeah, we're going to be all the way back in the part right here. Go back forward one right here. So <clears throat> we got six out of ten in the three-foot circle. So, yeah, let's go ahead and hold this up right here. So we got six out of ten in the three-foot circle, right, which is pretty good. And then we got two out of ten. So our goal for this week is to beat six out of ten into the into the one putt circle, right? Mm -hmm. And two out of ten. So what did you learn from that? I know you were frustrated and you were saying, like, oh, you know, I let me have like another I, go. Yeah, I feel like I can do better than that. And so he was, you know, I tried to sit there and be like, Well, I just want to take one more shot. That way I can prove well, no, prove it by your next training session on paper that you can do better. Yeah. You know, you don't need to sit there and throw one more ball down to prove yourself. No. Let that be your goal. Let that be what motivates you. Okay, when I come back through it and do it again, I'm going to be better. Yeah. And that's, again, why one of the things – oh, hold on. So I've got to put my camera on here. I'm pressing all sorts of crazy buttons right here. Okay. Can you guys see me? Yeah, you can. So one of the things that we've talked about, right, is you not coming back out for a playing lesson and be like, hey, come out for another lesson next week. It's like, do you see now why you need to practice this before coming out for another coaching session? Because yeah. I don't want to just get on the golf course with you. Yeah. And, oh, we played again. Yeah, you've learned how to use the scorecard. That's great. But I need the data to start to show you that. The, you want to see the improvement. You don't want to just come back out here another week later and still make the fool out of yourself. You say, well, where's the results? Where's the results? And this is where I want you to snap a photo of this. So that for the three-shot circle, we went for five yards off the green. And our goal was eight out of ten. Now, why was it eight out of ten? Why is it so high? Eight out of ten, where the others are two out of ten. What's so because you're you're at that point you are bumping and running from you know 40 yards from the pin so you're you're trying to to you're trying to get from a from a 30 yard off the green to get it to a two foot yep and so what was different what do we change for you what, what was the biggest difference that we used what club were you using and what did we end up with uh, using my eight iron, eight you know, iron. Sometimes yep. you can think, you know, oh, that's a that's a fifty six wedge. I just need to get into the air. When you, you end up, you know, taking a full swing, which is really a pitch shot, you take a full swing and you you, you know, send the ball out of water somewhere. Yeah, yeah. or leave one shore of the green from three yards off the green, like we did, right? Because mm -hmm. it was just, just too much risk. Don't pitch the ball when you can chip it. So we we've got that. And then what I want you to do now, as we wrap up the session, right, is. Your goal is the 100-yard green, right? So I'm going to come in and switch this over, guys. Thanks for being patient with uh, with this, right? So for this one, we're putting in here 
the hundred yard green is what we're going to go for. And our goal is we've got to get it within 30 feet short, 30 feet long, 30 feet right. So you're going to benchmark the first time. We're not going to put a number in the target score. We're going to see how many times you can do it. Maybe it's one. If it's one, guess what? What are you going to get the next time? Two, right? And what are you getting this time? Three. So you're now playing to your level and realizing where I need to work. And this is what I want you to work on, right? Brad's now working on obviously the target zone. Can I get into the target zone? So to finish up today, what I want you to do is write down your notes. Number one thing you took away from putting in your words was what? Number one thing you got from lag putting. I want you to write those down and then I'm going to come back over once I've worked with Brad and we'll review that, okay? All right. Oh, right when I said I'm coming back over. So how many, how many have we got so far? How many have you hit? Like two out of six. Two out of six, okay. Okay. So tell me, how quick do you think that swing was? Are you, get, are you speeding back up? What's happening? Are you overthinking? Are you overthinking? What's going on? overthinking and speeding up so again remember what we talked about a successful training session would be actually replicating because practice makes what you know this and there's a bunch of people watching and if they don't realize that you know the basic fundamentals of the scoring method i mean it's going to make me look like absolute crap okay, no, <laughs> practice makes it's a type of marker permanent right so the idea here is is that you normally practice on a driving range, nobody watching, hitting a ton of golf balls and go, wow, I'm hitting it good today. Good for you. This is great. We're moving in the right direction. I need to have you practice under this pressure. So when you do have to make a par on the last hole to shoot 78 and break 80, you're like, I've done this a ton of times. I know what happens. I speed up. I swing quicker, right? So slow it down. Get into the routine that you feel that you need to get. You talked about what, so what should my routine be? I don't know. Whatever you've got to work to be able to put this ball in play, which I think we've talked about is, Try and make a 75% speed golf swing, right? Okay, let's go and see it. So it feels like you're going to hit this one out there about 120. All right, start to the right. So go ahead and let's go ahead and put, the, uh, put it down on the scorecard. But the big thing here, right, is it's when we're missing it like this, right, it's still playable if we've got a five iron, okay? And if we can't put a five iron in play consistently, remember what people say, well, oh, I might as well just hit a driver. What's the, what's the one about skiing, I tell you? Okay. Yeah, no driver. It's like going on a black run double diamond with ice because I can't go down the bunny run. I should try that, one, right? Okay. So let's see it again. All right, let's come over here, coaches. What... what uh, what feedback do you have for me? What do you guys, what questions do you have? What are you seeing? Um, thoughts and feedback. Jay Cook, you're not on mute, so you can ask a question or feedback for me or insights. Yeah, no, I was just, I was just thinking it'd be very interesting to see him do his rehearsal repeat swing to, to get the feeling rather than yeah. the mechanical of it. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. And, and, and his swing speeding up now. I think one of the things what I want to try and do for him is this is the first coaching session we've had is benchmark. I mean, he's shooting 82, 83, sending me all of his photos. He's on board, but he hasn't yet benchmarked how far he still has to come because he's still having two, two or three triples around. Right. So what I want to show him is, you know, when you get under pressure, you know, he just missed another one, right? He's going to get two out of two out of 10 with a five iron. And then I love that idea right after this. Yeah. Billy Manzan, take deep breaths is now let's do rehearsal repeat and out of 10, how well can you do that? So yeah, that's an awesome one there. I love that, Jay. Uh, what are the thoughts, questions, feedback from the team? John Eisentrout, what are you taking from it? This is kind of my intro to, to the scoring method. So I'm just learning the lingo a nice. little bit here. Pretty nice, Brad. Stuff. Yep. Yeah, and, and I think like, come back and do the scorecard. You got to check on it. So one of the biggest things I've got to discipline them in, right, is breaking up that thing, going back to the scorecard, filling it out, you know, because today um, Maurice just kept on wanting to like, oh, I'm going to hit another chip. I'm like, no, no, that was your chip. Sorry, you have to start. You've got to go to the next one. You didn't get it. I only got one out of five. I only got one out of five. I'm like, well, 
you got two out of 10 to see if you can get three. So one of those things I keep on, you know, reminding myself and all the coaches is slow down to speed up. I want to get them disciplined so they can do it themselves. So Maurice is right here right now, like filling out his notes, writing out his notes, because I want him to be able to do this in a practice session without me. And this is where for me now I'm, I'm like with nice Brad, well done. Um, for me, I'm, I'm try, you know, I've got a lot on my plate and stuff. So I don't coach every single week. And I'm also starting to realize there's a lot of my players. I want them to go away and practice three or four times, send me the text with the photos of how they're doing and then come out and come out for another playing assessment. But I want to try and get them as good as I can, as quick as I can. And I'm more focused on for me now, like how quickly can I get the results? All right, let's read out the, uh, let's read out what we did, Maurice. Let's, uh, let's hear what you put together. For number one, uh, for me, I felt like, you're at those two feet, but even if you, you, you had a bad, it's a bad hole, you know, you get there and you're like, oh man, I'm already, oh, this is for a bogey or a double bogey, and you just rush it. No, that two putt matters. That two putt not a stroke. You, know, you sit there and even, if you miss it, that adds another stroke. So why, why even play that type of way? So make every putt count, even the two putts. Yep, I love that. can to put though that I you know if I sit there and shoot you know a 30 yard putt all I need to do is get it within two feet and I can put that that's where it takes you back to that you know making every two putt because then all right you're two putt you're doing great you know that's that's yeah because the, the one putt circle relates to the two putt circle right because right? if you can't make it into the one putt, you know, you're dropping a stroke every single time. So the better you are at a one putt circle, the better you are at a two putt circle. You know what I mean? Like it keeps knocking itself on, right? The way I think about it, every two putt, you know, every hole, it's eight. You know, if you have between two putting and three putting, you're taking like 18 strokes if you can two putt rather than three putt. Yeah. And you've been playing golf for five months. And we're already, you know, we're going to be pretty darn close to breaking. I mean, 100 real soon. And I think 90 within a month or two, right? Yes. Okay. Was 93 now, so. 93 now, yeah. But I'm saying consistently every time being able to go and play any golf course around here, right. break 90 is what what our goal is, right? Okay, next one. Uh, three. When you're on the, when you're chipping, you know, when you're uh, just 10 yards out from the green, playing the right club, you know, don't don't go and think, oh, you know, 56 wedge, you know, 50 for 58, whatever, no. You can play a nine eye. You can play an eight eye to get a bump and run. That bump and run, especially if you have a lot of room for that for that ball to roll to the pin, it's the perfect glove because then you're having to take a chip shot instead of a pitch shot. Yep. You'd rather take a chip shot than a pitch shot. Because yep. It's, uh, it's not a full swing. You got to take out full swing. There's so many mechanics to that as far as taking a chip shot, treat it like it's a putt. That's yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Treat it like it's a putt. Exactly. All right, let's keep on going. And there, any other ones? Last, last thing. Yeah, last one. I love it. You're taking the chip shots. Read the green like you're taking the actual one. Don't yeah. Sit there and just think it's a chip shot. I just need no read. If you were actually with your putter, you're looking at that green how you would read it. Read it the same way when you're taking that chip shot. Love it. Good stuff. Well done, Maurice. Okay, so Brad, how many out of ten? Four. Four out of ten. Okay, so what did this show you then? Pressure. Sir. Pressure. But how much have you improved since, what, six weeks ago when we started? Night and day. Night and day, right? But you can still see, I'm in a, in a training session, I'm trying to get you uncomfortable to a point when you go and play. You play easy, but you train hard. You train, un you're a football player, right? How many times did you puke in practice because the coach was making you work out so hard? Yeah right then you go and play a game and a guy's giving you a bottle of gatorade and a fan half the time that's all i ever see these football players do life is easy i mean i should play that sport i get paid a bunch right <laughs> i could be a kicker for sure <laughs> so here's what i want to do and this is what jay was saying we're going to do what we talked about is rehearsal repeat so remember when we make a rehearsal swing hold the finish nice balance we're going to get up there and we're just going to go through now and we're just going to start to feel that we're still going to track another 10 okay so we got four out of ten we're going to track another 10 but this time all we're going to do is we're going to repeat our rehearsal okay and we're going to grade ourselves out of 10, not whether we hit the fairway or not, not whether it was a good shot. How close were you to repeating what you did in your rehearsal swing compared to what you did in your actual swing? Okay. Nice, Maurice. Each time, remember, just make the little hinge, the handshake, and then go from there, right? So, okay. So how much tension did you feel on that one? Okay. Do another one for me. Loosen up even more. Okay, now no pause on the way back. Just go ahead and just get a rhythm through. 
back and through. Good. Now go ahead and set up to it. And all I care about is how well did you repeat it? I don't care where it goes. Okay, so how much, how, how would you say out of 10? Tension on that one, or that re repeating what you did in your rehearsal compared to what you did in, your, in that swing. Five, what would you change in it? What would be different to get it to a seven out of 10? Two tenths on the way back, all right? So what would you do to, 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 to get less of that? Loosen up, okay, what else? Okay, not think, what else? If there's anything else, okay? So let's go ahead now, grab, grab, write down on your phone because you didn't have you didn't bring his workbook today, even though coach will ask him to. Okay, don't worry, I'm giving you a bunch of crap today, Brad. Okay, is what I want you to do is I want you to write down in notes on the bottom right here. I want you to write down, okay, repeat my rehearsal, breathe, don't overthink. And again, I think your speed that you've talked to me about is it feels like you're, when you're swinging good, it feels like you're at about 70 to 75%. Like you're trying to hit a five on 150 yards, not 190 yards, okay? All right, and then we're going to repeat that rehearsal, okay? We're going to go through that. We're going to set up, repeat the rehearsal, see if we can get a 6 out of 10, okay? All right, so let's pick on some other people. Uh, Ross, what are you picking up from this? Yeah, I like, uh, I like that you're not necessarily being like, hey, let's work on your elbows. Let's work on your, Great your swing, club Let's work on working on the, the tension levels, how we can reduce them. And I, I say relax, relax, repeat, and, you know, rehearsal, repeat, same thing. And um, Yeah, I, I like what you're feeding them. But you can see, right, I mean, and, and one of the videos that I did from last week, you guys will be getting probably at the end of this week is, I mean, one of the guys I'm teaching right now, he's, he's a left hand and his right hand grip, I, I can see 11 knuckles on his right hand. I mean, that's how strong it is. Yeah, he's hitting five irons, 190 on a string. It's like, why would I deal with that when he's trying to hit? He came to me one hit driver. Brad was like, I've got to put my driver in play. Well, his swing's really darn good. His tension, he works out. He's a muscly guy. I mean, his tension and his in intensity when he's on the golf course is so high. So what we've seen the last couple of times we've gone out, he's played really well and, he's, and you'll see the videos of it and he's been able to slow it down. But again, I put the video on him. I put some pressure on him. I get him uncomfortable. Now, my goal now is obviously before the end of the session, I'm going a little longer today because you guys, I added this in. But uh, I want to go ahead and just bring him down to a place where he can find his game again and realize where it's at. So he can leave with, yeah, I felt some pain. I realize where I'm at, but I know that I'm a heck of a lot better than I was in going through that process. Um, Steve Miller, what about for you? Thoughts, feedback on this? No, it's good. I'm kind of, it reminds me of one of my students that I've got right now where what it's, what you're doing with them is just telling me, it's like, when I turn my back and go help another student, it's like, I can't assume that they're doing the same thing. It's like, you're watching how he's quickening up whenever, like he's getting away from you or getting out of that routine. And I've got a student who does the same thing when I'm watching him. He's like, oh, it's great. And as soon as I go help the next student, I hear whack. Whack. So it's 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 kind of more on me to like you know get back on too. So you know keeping yep. that pressure, getting them slowed down. Well, and the other thing that you know where, where my mind was going today with Brad was actually just to calibrate, right? So he he came hitting just the roping hooks. You couldn't believe how much these things were hooking, right? And then I talked to him on just on the golf course about look, play a bunker shot for me, hit a cut shot bunker. And he started hitting it beautiful. Started to basically, it felt like a 20 yard slice and he was hitting a five yard draw. So to me, my thought was today is look, I'm gonna calibrate him. I'm just gonna have him pull it and then push it, pull him and then push it. But with you guys being able to get on the call, I love being able to J sort of highlight the tension and use that moment. So I think as a coach, you know, you've always got to be looking like what's happening, how are they hitting it? How's their day going? So I think as he's, he's going through it right now, he's doing reasonably well as far as tension. But again, now he's, he's actually getting, starting to get a miss right. He's never had that before because he's, he's never, he didn't have a miss high right and low left. It was just straight duck hooks. So at least, it's, at least he's starting to learn how to not flip as much as he was. But now I'm just going to get back into calibration and get him to go left, right, left, right. And that's the homework I'm going to have for him for this week is, look. So um, Brad, on this next one, I want you to go ahead and hit a nice hook for me. Okay, I want the ball to hook as much as you can, and then we're going to go back to a slice, and then we're going to go to pull, and then to go to a push. But all I want is a hook. Get the ball to hook. So that that to me is like the 
you know, the thing is, is he's got to have his homework lined up. He has to know what he's got to go on. I know there's that instinct to like, I've got to go and fix him. I've got to make him right. I'm like, no, I'm okay with him having some pain because it's highlighting what he needs to work on because he's putting his two iron in play a lot now, but I know he's still grabbing driver. And I know, there you go. The courses that he's playing are quite wide open, but if he starts going to, the, you know, a lot of the courses around here, Sierra View and uh, uh, Northridge, he's got to be able to put that five iron in play the whole time. If he's at Lincoln Hills, yes, he can get away with a two iron and the driver and spray it. So again, I think as a coach, you always, you know, you've got a coaching plan, but it's based on their improvement plan, their goal, their desire to practice, uh, and, and basically being able to help them through that process. Um, so yeah, does Maurice want to come to be my assistant coach? There you go, Ross. I love it. Um, okay, Michael, I love your students. are taking time to reflect, record the results, rehearse what you would like them to do better next time they're experiencing your session in the first person. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that, Michael. It's, uh, I think the journaling is such a big part to it. Um, really getting them comfortable with that. So let's take a look. We've got a few minutes left, so we're going to go and, go and check out Brad. So Brad, let's go ahead and see. We're going to go ahead and have some fun here. Okay. Uh, Maurice, could you come and hold this for me? We're gonna have some fun right here. Yeah, hit some shots. Okay. All right. So, kind of got to hold that down this way, right? So it doesn't it doesn't cover up like that. So that's our one right there. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. Uh, so what I want to see from you is we're gonna hit a few golf shots, and we're gonna hit first one. I'm gonna do set up to it. Okay, get ready for now. We're gonna get control of the board. So make a little rehearsal swing. Okay, we're going to do the foot the ball. So you can see as the tension is getting so high for him and you guys, is, his arms are never going to release, all that technical stuff. But to me, now, can I get him to calibrate himself and start to feel the ball get nice and easy, 100 yards, it's only it's going to hook him. That felt like a big toss, right? So come over here and just... So the ball went dead straight in the air, correct? But that felt like what to you? A hook. How much of a hook? A big hook. So this is calibration. Remember on the golf course when you were hooking it and I told you hit a bunker shot, hit a slice? You're driving the wheel of the car and today, because of the tension, you're getting so tense, everything's going hard right. Now didn't I tell you when we said the first lesson, once you know how to calibrate, once you get rid of a hook, now you'll miss it right, but then you can just dial it back in. So what, if you were going to the first tee right now, what would your mindset be? What would, the, what, how would you hit off the first tee no matter what the hole? Four iron, okay. And what would you try and make the ball do in the air? Go straight. But how would you make it go straight? Try to hook it. Whereas three weeks ago, you were duck hooking it and I was telling you slice it. But we're giving you ownership of the thing because all we've got to do, remember Maurice, is get the ball in play. That's it. Just advance the ball in play, advance it to the green, the worse you make is a bogey. We know you're making a couple of birdies around. We know you're making a handful of parts. It's the three sevens around. You get what I'm saying? Maurice, does this make sense? It's like, get the ball in play. No, I remember my first lesson. You sat there and said, if you're going to miss, make it a good miss. Yeah, make it a good miss. It may not be the best shot you want to hit, but it's not out of bounds. If it's, it's not a good miss, you didn't lose the ball and it's not out of bounds. You didn't lose the ball. So let's set up again to this one. And so what I want you to feel now is, you know what I told you? You're going to start having control over the ball, but some days I hope it feels great. Other days, a slice feels like a hook. Other, do you really mean it's like yeah. you're starting to learn how to do that today? Everything tick, 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 tight, and it was this. Whereas in the past, it was this. Okay, so real soft, but I want something that has a nice hook to it that can go about 100 yards. Yeah, dead straight with maybe a one yard draw. So, Brad, come back. Let's take a note on this. What are you learning from this as we wrap up the session today? What do you take from this? You've gone through a ton of tension. What have you learned? Okay. 
And what happens now when you're under tension? Like today, you're on the right, driving one. What's happening now? Right. For the right. And why is it coming to the right? Show me with your body, kind of like what's happening. Yeah. Tight and stuck out to the right. Yeah. And so what we've got to do is feel like we're going to hook it so this can actually get through. Now, what happens if you start getting on the first hole and you actually hit a hook and the second hole you hit another hook? What do you do next? What do you start to play? So you're trying to play a play that or add a little slice to it. Slice to it, right? You calibrate it back out. But that's what you're doing throughout the whole round. So let's write that down. Let's jot that down in the journal. Uh, adjust to adjust to your, how you're playing for that day. Adjust to how you're playing. There we go. Look, there's Coach Jared. By the way, there's Coach Jared. He's obviously trying to get away from his wife and new <laughs> child right here. <laughs> Are you met, have you met Jared? Maurice, Jared, Brad, Jared, have you nice met me? Jared, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you guys. Perfect, right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap up with these boys right I'll here. Go you go, oh, come on over. We'll talk. You can stand in the picture. So everybody, uh, being respectful of your time, uh, like I said, today, I just thought it would be fun to go with something different and uh, get out. We've obviously been doing a whole ton of videos. So you'll see coming out from Courtney today that I've done – now, three playing lessons with Brad, um, a practice session last week with Joey. Uh, we're chopping those up into four sections. So 15-minute videos is an hour long. It's like the whole session out on the golf course. So you can go into Lightspeed, go into the Lightspeed VT, and you'll see all of that. It's under coaching scoring method with Will. Um, and so, again, I would just uh, hope you guys got a lot out of this today. Apologies for the sort of the camera stuff. But uh, hopefully what you saw is, you know, for me, what I learned from today is, again, allow my students to struggle make sure they're learning what the struggle is yes nice brad and, and help them help them to get through the struggle right by them finding out for themselves that it isn't like you said ross oh my left hip is sliding and clearing it's like no you're beyond tight you're beyond tense you've got people watching you and this is how again you'll see here in the next few weeks i believe brad will break 80 because he's going to start to understand how you know, flighting a nine iron down from 120 instead of trying to hit a sand wedge or a gap wedge is probably a slightly better idea to reduce speed and tension. So everybody, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, next week, Jared, Monday, you're doing Monday, Monday Mastermind. I just told him that right now. So he's uh, he'll let you all know next week <laughs> what the topic will be. Uh, but everybody, make it a great one. If you've got questions, thoughts, feedback, please reach out. Uh, any of you that aren't on with RGX yet, reach out to me. Uh, you can text me or go to RGX coach uh, backslash explore. Uh, but yeah, we'll catch you all next week and uh, be sure to watch out for the videos on Lightspeed. Thanks, everyone.